Instagram. Pull it. I was like, Bows. 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 Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. Yeah, my dad all going with. Say, man, we got a guy in here today, man. He ain't no stranger to podcasts. What up? He, yeah, he ain't no stranger to being on, behind that microphone. He mm -hmm. likes. To, he's an interviewer. He get <laughs> interviewed, man. Check it, man. My boy Dirt, man. He what in up? the building, man. So, so Dirt, what's up, man? First name Dirt, last name Beats. You See know that? what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dirt, <laughs> saying Dirt Beats around here, man. Yeah, man. Dude. Um, I just appreciate you having me out here, man. You know, it's a really dope platform. You've Thank had you. some uh, starts to other people on Thank here. Thank you. And just for me to have the opportunity even sitting sit in the chair to some of these other people have sat in is an honor to me, man. So I appreciate you uh, having me out here, brother. You see how that boy come through genuine know, like that? I know. Yeah, he been raised right. It's all about the energy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's all about the energy, right, man. Say, I appreciate y'all for having me on the show. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, 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 nigga fly to a nigga fly. He start talking low. That nigga start talking real low. I appreciate y'all for having me on the show. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that nigga fly, y'all. Watch that nigga, cool, man. man. Just trying to keep it cool. Nigga. ain't want that happen nothing. <laughs> So, so how? Uh, no, what but I'm curious to know what that was about to for, say. First yeah, of all, yeah, okay, I was about to ask that. Okay, too. so, um, so originally my story starts, uh, um, dirt. So originally people start calling me dirt because I was the color of soil. Wow. But I made it um black dirt, black dirt. And how old? Are, and how old were you when they were doing that to you? Till I was about thirteen. See, soil. No, no when soil. did they start off calling you that? By so, by thirteen. By, by thirteen, they so oh, would call me soil. Cool. Then. Then yeah. dirt, Them then, uh, kids, then I was like kids. dirt, and then uh, you know I'm a self-produced artist, so I started off rapping first, so I changed it to dope innovative rap technique. So that's okay. actually what dirt stands for. Wow. What's happening? And so I for, like that. And so for me, the meaning is a little bit. It's a little bit deeper for me because dirt, you can walk on it, you can step on it, people spit on it, you know, but you really cannot breathe without dirt. Wow. Yeah, Nothing for the trees it. is going. You, wow. you, you know, mm -hmm. you build everything. Your foundation, foundation is on yeah. dirt. You know, so, you know, it's one of those deals where it's like, you know, you can spin on me, talk about me, all of that. I'm just going to show love and keep it moving. You know, I I'm like, just going to show like love that. and keep it moving. Like yeah, that. but yeah, yeah, nigga, yeah, I hear all that. Yeah, but what about the beach, nigga? Hell, you know, like, <laughs> dirt, 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 it sound good. And, you know, but for you to say beach, you know, that means you you producing Beats, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so what about the music beats. at? So basically, uh, like I said, self-produced artist. Okay. So um, I've been making my own beats, man, for about 15, 17 years yeah. almost. And um, I've had a couple couple little things. I, I think I had a single that peaked uh, number four on Billboard Which called Kool-Aid. Okay. Kool-Aid with a JT Money and this little kid yeah, named yeah. Lil Bass. This was back in like 06. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. But I'm um, I wrote it with this dude named uh, Jacob Casher. Okay. He, he write for Cash Money. He's a white kid from Virginia Beach. And, okay. Um, you know, I was just, I was living in Miami. So I grew, I'm originally from Texas, but then I moved to Miami. I mean, I moved to Virginia Beach. I uh, grew up at a home, I uh, grew up, I uh, graduated school from the uh, same uh, Salem, which is the same school okay. as the Neptunes and Eclipse. Okay. And then I moved to Miami with $40 in a dream. And then I moved back here and that's pretty much my, yep, my, my, my circle. Eclipse. That yeah. Right so uh, like I met Pharrell, I was on Star Trek's yeah, first mixtape. What, really? You know Pusha that. T? Yeah. Terrence. I met Pusha T. Terrence is Yeah, he yeah. was dealing with uh, uh, play clothes. You, you mm -hmm. know, I met, I met you racing yeah. with clothes, you messing with me. I've been here 15 years, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't play no games Shop when it comes to fire. Look, I need man. to get something Say, man, before listen, I leave. man. I ain't playing no games when it comes down to these clothes. I know everybody when it comes to the clothes. Now, I didn't start off in podcast. I start off, you know, flipping clothes. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you 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 was hanging out with Pharrell. That nigga beast. You remember we went to that store in New York? What was that store? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, he got he the, he, nice he got shop, that, that uh, what's the name of his clothing line? Billion, got, billionaire Club. billionaire club. Billionaire club. We went yeah. in there and he got some Pumas in the back. Man, that nigga he worked. Nah, Pharrell. So I met Pharrell one. I met him. I met him once when I was eighteen years old, and it was crazy because. This was just when he was actually starting to blow up. This was like yeah. when Grind had took him. We was yeah. at ODU. Yeah. And, bro, his presence was just like, it's like he was, 
Like he was happy to meet me. Like you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. And I'm really? like, you're you're for real. Like you know what I mean? He's dope. His, he, he got dope. a real dope presence. He yeah. got a real dope presence for real. I think that's I think that's something else, and that's why he keeps going. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of dudes, man, that be want to be. They get famous too fast. I've been telling these niggas on this podcast, don't get famous <laughs> too damn fast. You know I what mean, I'm you moving too fast. You know, your fame. You done got famous before you got some damn money. I mean, but fame is so much power, man. And it's like it's only human nature to. Abuse power, man. Yeah, but I, it, these know? niggas had fake fame. You know what I'm saying? Not really genuine fame like that. Yeah. I ain't gonna call no names, <laughs> but I'm just telling you, it's the such thing as fake fame. You know, like so in your fa- mind, you, do you think, think you fake make, fame is well, you know, we got your damn studio, put it in your house, you're rapping in your closet. Next thing you know, somebody tell you you're doing okay because you was hanging out with Baby and them for one damn day, and hey, I'm I'm there now. And I say, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. You act, like, yeah, you act like you just yeah. up. I, At the I, end of the day, you're not famous. Yeah, I think I think we actually, I think in our culture as far as Dallas, so since I've been back in Dallas, I've been here through the whole boogie area and all that stuff. Yeah. And I really feel like that happens a lot in here. Like, yeah. we basically blow up too fast and we mm-hmm. inflate our egos. So uh. then we're like, oh, we got to know our worth. Uh. You got to know who you're dealing with. Uh. It's this for this. When in all actuality, like, okay, say I book you for a show. And you really not, you only gonna bring out your homeboys and nobody else. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's it. And, but, you know, you like, nah, but I'm doing this. Or, you know, it's a little bit different. Like, I've seen it, me, myself. I've seen people blow up too quick and, it kind of kills their career. It does. It definitely kills. Don't don't counter. Yeah, <laughs> it, don't, ain't because, no damn counter. Because this is what people yeah. forget. This is what people forget. It's really about service, man. It it's always like has when, been. You when you when you're in service, man, you should do shit for free. Sometimes I'm sorry if I'm cussing. Mm-hmm. You should do stuff for free sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like it's just part of it because that energy that you put out will automatically come, come back. back to you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. So coming up, you was down in Miami. You were down there on South Beach. You hanging yeah. out, looking at them girls in the bikinis. Man. Nigga, I know what you were doing. Don't Same. try to play me, nigga. Same. I know what was going on down there in the Man. bikini. Yeah, it's a yeah. new beach. Yeah, the yeah. Whole beach, South Beach is new. Uh, see that now nah, I didn't even ask you. Uh, right. The whole beach is new. This so, is so crazy. I, I didn't know that. Is it only I, a certain part of South Beach? Yeah, because nah, we were naked. We went. We went. I got to say, if I knew that, I would have got butt naked. Straight Look. down in there, man. <laughs> we did not I was, see I that. had my trunks on. I no. didn't know they were rolling like that. No, it's not a part of the beach. The <laughs> whole beach. Wow. When I was out there, you know, they changed the rules. Cause I even, was about to say, how long ago? That's a long time. Yeah, ago. it was a while ago, but um, they changed the rules because it even used to be 18 and up to get into the clubs wow. out there on the strip. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was right before I got down there, but it was still like, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it, it, man, I loved it when I lived down there. Like I said, I moved to Miami with $40 in a dream, and then 10 months later, I was on the radio. How long, how long was you on the radio down there? Um, I was. Well, I what, did, what, what station? Um, uh, Power ninety six. So with Teddy T. So uh, I had a relationship with uh with my, uh, with, with a guy. Um, shout out to my brother Scorpio. He's my manager, and uh, I was actually linked up with the largest record pool in South Florida, which okay. is Off the Hook Promotion. Okay. Edward Forbes. Shout out to him. And uh, I just learned so much about the industry back then. And like I said, this is back then. This is before the internet is really surging. And how old were you? How old were I? I was probably about 24, 23, yeah. 24, okay. yeah. You know. So, um, bad boy. Yeah, man, it was surging, yeah. man. And you know, back then we were, it was just, it was different. You know, people would come in, we'd have to go service the radio station mm-hmm. with the records. Mm-hmm. You know, we did the whole flyer. That was the whole flyer era where mm-hmm. everything, you know, they was hand to hand with the hand to hand promotion. Yeah. So uh, I learned a lot about the industry and how everything works when I lived down in Miami. Shout out know? to my boy Gary down there at Purple Carpet. Got the store down there in Miami. Yeah, that's lit. That's yeah, lit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's certain ones that we that we we have to go see them when we go down there, man. Yeah, you know, tap I, in. So yeah, yeah. Same Miami? thing with same thing with. Uh, uh, do you miss it? Yeah, I actually do miss Miami, but I try to go down you there. You frequent? Yeah. Yeah, I try to go down every once in a while. I was just down there in uh, March, actually. Mm-hmm. But you wouldn't move back. I'm thinking about it if you know if I can get I, I can move up a couple more tax brackets I can get an apartment down there because mm-hmm. they keep they keep building stuff down there wow. it's crazy so I I would love to have like a little apartment on the beach or something like that but you know that's that's just pricey because yeah. people in Texas are usually so hardcore Texas that they'll visit other places but they won't move anywhere nah. else that's the reason why I was asking no I love I love go down there but he coming back home he he ain't, no he wants to move down no no no, no I, come out. I, mean, I want to have a location back, I mean, ain't I, nothing like Dallas ain't nothing like He's right. so you go down there, you're coming back. No, that's facts. I already that's know, facts. man. We got well, the economy is right here. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If, I ain't gonna shout out to the Republicans and what they doing. I don't know what's up with Texas. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they, it's something about how they just make us Even feel like we somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like I'm just some just yeah. on another level nah, at all real. time. Okay, what happened in Philadelphia? What happened in wherever? It's gonna be like, well, I'm in Texas. We over yeah, here. We in Texas. <laughs> Am I right? Nah, we like our own. It honestly, feel different. Honestly, man, to me, and, and you know, I don't know. If people can call me conspiracy theorists or whatever, but to be honest. Texas has so much power in the world because Texas is a place when it comes to reform, gun reform. Mm -hmm. This is the first place that if they can take the guns from Texas, from Texans, then they can they can do the whole thing across yeah, the world. Yeah. But they ain't gonna be able to take no guns from Texas. Right, right. So you got that right. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so that controls a lot. Like the power that Texas has, even like overall in general. It's, it's huge, man. Like it's it's, it's huge to, mm. for me. Yeah. I look at it because, yeah. like I said, even with the gun reform thing, they ain't gonna be able to do that in Texas. Like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. They ain't no, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I still got guns buried. Exactly, bro. You understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> what does Merso mean? Oh, this is my clothing line. So, um, what? Because yes. you have it on the chain too. So yeah, I'm like, dang. Yeah, so it's a clothing line. Um, you know, uh, shout out to my brother Guapo, man. He passed away, man. Tree hugger. Was his clothing line, and um, after he passed, he passed about two years ago on uh, yeah, Veterans Day. That, bro. Yeah, I all started the clothing line based off of our friendship. Man, he was one of my close partners. Man, I used to go, I used to pull up on him, you know, every two, two, three times um, a, a what week. What happened to it? Uh, somebody shot him, man. Wow. Uh, it was like a domestic thing with a girl. Him and the girl died. So wow. Yeah, it was. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, man. it was pretty tragic. Gun violence is something. It's funny how you w went right into that, and, yeah. and you know, it's it's, it's just. You hate to see that happen. You yeah, know what I mean? No, but no, I don't think brother. I don't think I don't think taking guns away controls that narrative. Nah, either. because I mean, wherever the guns are illegal, even in New York, the guns have been illegal in New York for a long time. Correct. Even after they started doing the five year mandatory, Correct. people still carry guns. I know that. And that's why I said make it harder on the ones who 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 try to do right and be like, I'm gonna be a good person. Yeah. Well, not a bad person who's sneaking around with the gun becomes the one who's in power. So in you power. gotta be careful, yeah. man. You gotta be very careful. Nah, yeah, for sure. So man. what um so so you real life street street is it street story? What is real it? Real life street stars. Real life street stars how did you end up dealing with these guys man so shout out to jeff joker rook midnight fast money real life month cousin jeff the whole squad over there man so i linked up with them probably about five years ago maybe and um me and jeff always been cool but we started actually working together i, I was the in-house producer over there and um you know helping them try to um uh, sometimes like like I got a pretty good con uh, relationship with Asian Dolls manager. Okay. So sometimes I, you know, try to maneuver whatever I can maneuver to good interviews or you yeah. know celebrities on the show or whatever. And um, sometimes I ask the questions with them. So I, I just you know that whole platform. Shout out to them, man. Yeah. They just it's a huge. Seen, it's like one of the biggest vlogs in it, Texas it is, for real. It is. I've been watching them and and I'm very proud of what they do for for the South. Nah, you know? for sure. They hold it down. So <clears throat> for the culture. Yeah, for sure. And so where I come in is that I actually have a Henny and Halos podcast. On the real life production channel, okay, and uh, that's uh, me. Me and Jeff curated that, and it's basically like a battle of the sexes type of podcast wow. where we actually do it in an open setting. So due to COVID, we brought it back to the studio, okay. but originally it was basically in the club. It was wow. in downtown at the Opera Club, Opera okay. in the top part, okay. and it would basically be a live interactive podcast where it would be men opinion versus women opinion in the open setting wow. and uh it was really really dope man is because we have live interactive with the audience mm -hmm. um where we ask them their opinion about yeah. certain questions yeah. you know i would basically have, i would basically do a current events we have a letter of the day a letter of the week and then uh we do venus versus mars wow which is basically like you know man, hall man. have all at it like I, you know i really i really like that you know, but it's, it's honestly, man, it's really an experience, really like a date night thing. You can actually bring your girl out to it. And what so many women have come to me about after the show, they say, man, I really it really helped me into a man's mind to see what a man's thinking. Right. Because a lot of times when you ask people questions, they're going to give you an answer based off of a relationship or based off of the dynamics of the relationship at the current present time. But when you're in an open forum and you're just asking questions, people are going to say what they think, mm -hmm. you know, to make an impressionable Appearance on their opinion, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so definitely. you really get what people are really thinking in that open forum. So due to COVID, like I said, I had it and I, we brought it back to the studio, but we back outside. So hey. I'm about to be back outside. I'll probably be on a rooftop the, the, hey, or man, somewhere. Hey man, don't don't run out there. I want you to walk out there. <laughs> Listen, man, don't you catch nothing. Don't catch nothing. 
man. And, you, and the thing is, is that with Henny and Halo, so Henny, so Henny and Halo. Don't catch nothing. <laughs> look, Listen, look, man, you I'm running safe. out there, you gonna look, walk? No, I'm safe, man. Okay. I'm a safe guy. That's what I'm, I'm a safe about. man. Like, <laughs> Like so, I say, I'm a safe guy, safe. man. I'm so let, guy. let me ask you. So you you basically when you do the beats, you do them just for yourself, or you like like love love doing them for everybody? Nah, man. To be honest with you, I'm pretty much a walking label. Um, okay. And the reason that I say that is because I produce for about. Well, let me just name it out. Name it okay. out. Nate G. Okay. Um, Audie. Okay. Um, Abby Unique. Okay. Um, Ashley Michelle. Okay. Um, Alfredo. Uh, uh, Zane, uh, uh, Brittany Kiana. Yeah. Uh, so you just like to get yeah. to it. Yeah. So I produce for a lot of different artists yeah. and um, different I make type of artists. All different type of artists. So um, and I basically produce everything. I record everything. I mix and master everything. I usually do the artwork. In most cases, I shoot the videos. I will chop up that's the why, videos. That, that's why real life street star, star stars got you over there. Yeah. You're a so, talented brother. Yeah. And then. And then you add that, all of that, and then with Real Life Street Stars, Real Life Productions, I have a platform where mm -hmm. I can be able to showcase mm -hmm. that or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. So in a, in a, essentially, I am a walking label because I just do so much different stuff. And then even with the artists, I book you for shows because I do Dallas Unplugged. Wow. And with Dallas Unplugged. I was going to ask you about that. I yeah. heard you talking about it earlier. Yeah, so Dallas Unplugged is something else that I curated. Uh, it's basically I, where I try to capture... Um, the transition between sonic sound and live sound. Okay. Every time. And it's like every time it gets everybody every time. Because what happens is that especially independent artists, they never perform with a live band. I know. They always perform with studio tracks, mm -hmm. with the vocals inside of the tracks, over top of the tracks, with the mic and the DJ. Mm -hmm. So actually being able to provide that band element, it really, because the band will test you. I know. The band will test you and let you know exactly where you're at as an artist. So it's really a stepping stone for artists and indie artists artists to come out. I would love for you to come out, man, to the next one that I come out. Y'all come gotta out. You got to tell me when it is. I do it every Can Friday. Can we boo? Where? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Where? You know, it's the Apollo in Dallas. I'll boo you up yeah. off the stage. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You you say, I thought you said, can you boo? No, nah, <laughs> boo, nigga. <laughs> boo, nigga. Get him out of here. He yeah. ain't, do, he nah, ain't yeah. good as you. you hey, hey, you ain't the nah, one. Honestly, if you find nah, somebody nah, like if you that. find somebody that you can boo, yeah. I will let you boo him. Well, you know, because you know, they better come with it. No, because honestly, man, you be picking has, them. No, I, yes. Dallas has so much talent. Mm -hmm. And even the people that, because, you know, there's a registration free. I'd only charge $20 a song, you know, for people that I don't ask to participate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and if they want to get on. And um, it's basically, you know, people that's serious about their craft, they usually be nice. You know what I mean? It's a good so, place. Is it, is, is it like, a, it's not like. It's a very intimate setting. It only it's not like about karaoke. It's really like. No, deep. it's a band, man. And, and, yeah. and the band I have is pretty much the coldest band in Dallas. I'm going to say what's it right the, now. What's the band? Musical Alchemist, man. Trust me, bro. It's the band is crazy. It's like a five piece band. So I can look they, them up. Yeah, musical alchemist. And if you look them up, you pretty much gonna see Dallas Unplugged because, like, we do you know we do a lot of stuff. And um, um, I just been trying to curate all of these different things, man, because I'm looking like I just want to monopolize everything that I do because mm. it all pretty much intertwines with each other. Right. You know, there's merch. Uh, I don't know where the merch in the mm. videos. Uh, uh, you know, um, the videos. I edit though. You know what I'm saying? So everything pretty much ties in together. Mm. I just try to, I'm just trying to monopolize mm -hmm. my skill set. How many uh, other things can you come up with? Because you seem like you keep coming up with this and this and this and creating this and this and this. How can you find time for everything? I know you want to put it all in one. You, got me, you ain't got no family. Uh, yeah, I do. I'm, oh, I'm a single dad. I mean, I'm a uh, single. Say it, single dad. Say it, single dad. <laughs> um, I mean, like you know, got my got my son. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, had yeah. to take him. Yeah, yeah. We I, gonna, we, I ain't gonna go Kevin Samuels on her, but let's keep it moving. No, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, <laughs> nah. So, um, nah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah ooh, so. We can talk about that. Off, off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, nah, but but, uh, but but I think it's it's key to stay busy because God's got a gift in you. So, no, yeah. so as you keep going and doing all these things, I mean, you're helping a lot of people. No, absolutely. Everything you said curates to helping people. No, it's it, you it's providing a, a, a platform. A platform, but then also you provide merch. You provide things to where it can help people. I think that's the biggest thing, and I'll say this every episode. Everything that you do should be to be a servant to help people. Yeah, man. I mean, I it believe all, in service. Yeah, it I all believe about, in service. am I right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think, I mean, when you talk about um, leaving a legacy, so what does legacy consist of? What is real legacy? Legacy to me is being remembered for what you did, 
Mm -hmm. But if you don't have any relationships or if you're not impressionable on anybody to even for them to even remember what you did, how can you have any type of legacy? Uh -huh. So, you know, and that's my thing is like, you know, it's all about elevating other people mm -hmm. because, you know, it, all the energy comes back around. Wow. You know what I mean, that's how uh, I feel. Yeah, me, no, I agree. Me, me, no, no, honestly. no, I'm, I'm you know on it. I, I, I hear you loud and clear. Yeah, because even when I'm, because even sometimes I know I'm going, I'm doing too much or I shouldn't do this or this person talking to me like this and I'm like, you know, who do you are, you know, or, you know, but I just say, hey, um, you know, it's going to come back or um, I just show love. Man, my motto is really show love and keep it moving. Like, and with me, like I'm a Leo, but like, I don't know if you're into the astrology stuff, but what, you know, what, I really kind of do the street um, astrology date, thing a little bit. What date are you? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Twenty six. Yeah. July. He twenty six. Oh, and, and you twenty three. Yeah, it's Leo. It's a all. It's lying of party. Check it, man. <laughs> Check it, man. You heard the man. Royalty, you heard what man. the man said. There's a lot of leadership going on yeah, up here right now. It is. So whereas um, real life street stars and the person, because you know we can never see the person who's asking all the questions and stuff like that. So, how many people do they have asking the question? It's, it's, so, it's Jeff, Joker, Fast Money, Midnight, Rook, and, um, like I said, Cousin Jeff. So, usually it's uh, Joker. Six. No, it's usually it's Joker, uh, Midnight, Fast, and, Je and Jeff. Four. That's usually. Okay. It's usually those four. So, they rotate. Sometimes it'll just be two of them. Sometimes it'll just be Fast and uh, Joe and Jeff, or sometimes it'll be Fast and Joker or whatever. So, it's dope. Um, it's yeah. dope. No uh, females? Um, yeah, shout out to the first lady, Angel White. She's she's definitely down. Shout out to Angel White. She's oh, an okay. albino. Oh, she's actually albino, okay. and uh, she's dope, dope artist. I got a couple records with her. I produce her. I like to think of myself as her producer, but um, so we haven't recorded it, recently. Say it, say it. Huh? So she comes I'm on there and, ask, and, and yeah. asks questions Yeah, I'm sometimes. a producer. There you go. That's what I'm it. talking yeah. about, baby. Get it out <laughs> I'm there. I'm a producer. Yeah, yeah uh, step, into the, step into the position. Don't play. You did that. No, yeah, no. I mean, honestly, I have a lot of her original records were records that she don't that she didn't get the beat from YouTube I actually produced the oh, beat really? so her original records like yeah I produced the beat and that's for some hot of them, and yeah. that's hot yeah so you putting that work in you gotta be yeah man I've been working it, man. man I just like my daddy always told me like when I used to play ball and my daddy always told me he said man when we was practicing don't worry about if it's going in it's all about the form just keep yeah. shooting yeah, perfect your form. Perfect yeah. your form. Yeah, your form. I get it to go in. Once yeah. you perfect the form. Yeah, so most definitely. I'm just still shooting, man. Like I said, I do a lot of stuff, and I know a lot of people be like, "Man, you do too much," but it's all good. Who yeah. you rock with down there in Houston? I know you. Be oh rocking. man, shout out to my brother Ryan, man. Ryan in Houston. I'm actually about to get ready to do a pool party out there. I'm actually about to go host one on the 19th next Saturday, and then I'm What's doing. What's it a called? The pool party that I'm going to be doing is called Half Naked. So I have this thing. So I have the Dallas Angels. It used to be called the Dirty Angels. But How I many have, of them is it? Uh, it's about three or four now. Like it, used, it fluctuates. Like I got an alumni of about sixty, you know, okay. of people that I can go back and tap into. But okay. really, the you know, pretty much the the top video vixens or models in Dallas. They pretty much I've, I've worked with them. Like wow. Keita Rose, yeah. Ginger, yeah. Uh, Sookie. Like mm -hmm. you know, I mean, all the top ones that look real, real pretty and are real fine have pretty much I've worked with them or they've been on my podcast or whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, but um, we're basically doing it's kind of like you know um, half naked you know um, uh, for all the ladies you know we basically an R and B lingerie party wow and um, where we have people come out and um, you know you know uh, for me like w when I started this whole thing you know I so when I started the whole model med model media all female media group you know basically what I the quotations for it mm -hmm. uh, it was called the Dirty Angels. And it was basically just for me to build my own brand. I was urban program director for this for this radio station. And I had my own show on Thursdays. And I was just like, well, I want to do something on Wednesdays. And I'm just catered it to the ladies. And uh, it was, I just did it for myself. And it took on its own personality. And then I got to thinking, I was like, dang, how can a girl go home to her dad and say, dad, guess what? The most, most awesome opportunity came home, came to me today. And yay, I'm a dirty angel. He's gonna be like, you're a what? <laughs> well, you know what? That old girl ain't gonna say that. They, they're no. sneaking anyway. They're going home telling their daddy they're a dirty angel. I mean, I've dirty seen, little angel. People, I mean, people post, you know, dirty angel. You know, so, but for me, it was an oxymoron brand. It was an oxymoron brand. It makes you think what it is, you know. What but, you think about that? But I changed it. It some almost sound, like, it, it really sounds like you, 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 you pretty much organized, like you know, some type of 
Escort service. No, see, and that's what I wanted to keep. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna go on to say it. (laughs) Yeah, you ain't gonna get past me. This is an escort service. No, it's not because I was caught up in a maze for a second, but then it clicked and say, "E, he talking about escort." Nah, nah. See, so the thing is, is that I'm not having anybody pay for anybody's time unless it's for a video. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless it's for a video shoot or a photo shoot, that's the only time that you're paying for time or clip hosting. You had some clip, clip, some words in there. You said half naked. You said, uh, you know, they go home and they tell their daddy, but they can't really tell them what they're doing. No, no, no. They can tell them. No, no, no. They can tell them what they're doing. Like I said, it's a female media group. So we do, uh, we do, we do interviews. Podcast, okay, event hosting. So they do that too. Time. Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah, I have basically pretty much wherever I go. I'm talking about the Dirty Angels, man. Dallas Angels. I changed it. <laughs> That's what I told you. That's what I said. Look, I had to change it. I, yeah. could, I, I was like, look, I got to change it. You know, Dallas is an international market. Yeah. You yeah. know, Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. You know, Dallas yeah. Cowboy cheerleaders. Yeah. And pretty much what I was trying to do is just create an urban version of that. You know, for women of color. I show, you know what you know I mean? show? Hate them old boys got him first. Hell, I wish I'd have started back in the day. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You a good one. Hell. I appreciate no, that. No, no, I can tell. I know people, I man. I yeah. appreciate that. Uh, yeah, and long as you, long as he got your back, you know, you ain't got nothing to worry about. He, he down with you like four. No, I'm, I got you. Like you know, I'm a, I'm a Leo, so I'm pretty loyal. It's just it's one of those deals where you know, if you burn me, then you'll be like, oh man, I didn't think he was capable of that. But as long as we, <laughs> if we. <laughs> Yeah, like you got that strap. Like like I'll, pee, I'll pee in I, your I bed if you don't know about words. it. You know what I'm saying? Then they yeah, got I, cold I'll, words. I'll pee in your bed if you don't, yeah, you don't yeah, know about it. Yeah, yeah, them a cold word. Yeah. <laughs> I got that thing, that burner. They call them burners. <laughs> no, I try to, no, like I said, bro, I show love, man. I show love, and like that's my whole thing. My motto has always been to show love. And it keep seemed it like you got a great spirit, man. You know, um, the thing I can really, really add is that as you keep going, man, like I said, the way you speak, I can tell, you know, it's a few people that came on this platform that really knew how to speak on the microphone. George Lopez, cause he had a podcast. Shout uh, out to George. Yeah, uh, uh, who else? Jay Cruz, Vita Loca. You could tell these people were experienced at speaking on that mic. I can tell who's experienced and who's not, cause I've been watching them, I'm like, okay. Yeah, but you you on point, man. I appreciate that. I, man. I like that. I man. appreciate you that. Know, I can tell. I, everything is self taught. I didn't, yeah. I have no formal, no formal, nothing formal education. Well, nothing. Me, I started out on Instagram Live. No, yeah. I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> And I took it there, you know. I, mean, no, I just decided one day I was going to talk, and I would talk anyway, so it wasn't hard for me. This is easy for me. No, nah, this is easy. No, you're a natural at it, yeah, for real. Yeah, we, we all. I think you are, too. And a big presence. It's like a, it's, it's one thing to be natural at talking, but then yeah. it's also another thing to have the presence to captivate people yeah, to yeah. listen to you. Yeah, talk, yeah, you know? yeah. You know what I mean? Appreciate that, man. Nah, we sure. trying to, we just trying to keep them going, right? Yes, the official Miss Jamaica. But yes, sir. You getting hungry? I can tell when you get hungry. You won't say nothing. <laughs> she on the started looking at. She's been. She's been. Yes, indif- sir. She been uh, indifferent. Yes, sir. Uh, she been indifferent uh, uh, towards me ever since I said dirty. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not my wife. Man, she. <laughs> hey, man, she been. She. She knows about people. We. Yeah. We deal with so many. That's the one thing we can't. We bring to the table. I guess we've dealt with so many mm. different people over the years. Uh, it's. It's something. It ain't nothing too much that's gonna surprise us. Mm-hmm. Because we've seen it, you know, um, we've been, you know, we've been around different people, you know, and they were doing whatever, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? We friends with a lot of different people. We've seen a lot of different things. I can't talk about it. Um, hey, man, you know, just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a thing where, you know, you got to know that people, it's all type of people out here, man. Basically. But then see God, he does something for me. I, like I said, with the people in that seat, I feel like God putting them in that seat because at the end of the day, you can be a light pretty much that pull people out of darkness in certain situations in their life. No, absolutely. So I think that's that's the part that we know. So we meet people where they're at. It don't matter who you are. Yeah. Uh, we it's certain people like, man, don't bring them on the platform. I'd be like, no, nah, bring them. Because at the end of the day, I'm supposed to bring people out of darkness. No, that's 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 hard, actually. That's hard. <laughs> that's like <laughs> I'm, I'm just being real. No, that's hard. That's like Jesus hand. Yeah, yeah, ass. like yeah, we, it's the truth. Like no. you got to help people. So if we're not helping nobody, what the hell are we doing it for? No, I mean to me, I mean, like, like I said, I think it's fulfilling. I mean, it's like I mean, it's like people go through life super duper vain yeah. and all about vanity and all about yeah. what they do and even if they help somebody, it's about what I can get out of it. Yeah. Yeah, you know I, I mean? see it. 
Absolutely, opportunity, uh, opportunist. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, motive, mo yeah. a motive, a hidden yeah. motive most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. But when it's done out of complete, like when you're genuine about it. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Um, I just think you. It's always received. It, it like, definitely is, and God has a way of turning things to good. You know, no, what absolutely. I'm so you can mean it for bad, but God will turn it to good. And and, and with me, I try to be so impactful. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I think I have. Like I think God has given me. Um, the ability to have godly love because yeah. like I'm I'm patient and yeah. I know I see I see people's quirkinesses and mm -hmm. they flaws mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. stuff right mm -hmm. when I first meet them I'll be oh they gonna talk about themselves all day mm -hmm. oh ooh, this person mm -hmm. gonna do this mm -hmm. oh, da, 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 da. and I'll be like um I still accept it you know yeah. I compartmentalize it figure out how to deal with it you maneuver around yeah it. and then but I accept them for who they are yeah 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 like yeah. you know what I mean and mm -hmm. then I just keep it moving well the thing I can say about that is a lot of times I think the way we do things the council culture I know y'all hate to hear that but at the end of the day <clears throat> I believe that it's certain people that I people like why you why you let him come on the platform or why you talk mm -hmm. to this person or that person <clears throat> but there's a process being done in each individual and 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 if you just give up on them at a certain state and in, in, in where they're at then you might not see that God got something bigger on the other side and that person can grow into it and a lot of people don't give a people a chance they just give up on them no absolutely so I, I don't want to give up on nobody I mean but uh, because a lot of times people like you say it goes back people you know look at what's in it for me yeah and even when it comes to opportunities mm -hmm. like a, some, somebody will see an opportunity it'll be an opportunity you'll give somebody opportunity I've done that right and then, but the opportunity is not shiny it's not glistening. It's not sparkling with yeah, glitters I, and glows. I, I you got to roll up your sleeves. You got to get a little dirty. And they don't even, they still won't take the no, opportunity. No, no, no. You know, because, but but people think opportunities are always supposed to be shiny. And that's not, that's not the case. But you're giving but people an opportunity. Proc procrastination can also cause that as well. Yeah. Oh man, I got procrastination yeah, problems yeah, for but real. But you give people opportunity a lot of times and it's like, I'm a Bible guy, man. And, and you don't, you don't cast your pearl before the swine. So you don't you don't put your pearl necklace around a pig's neck. What I'm saying is you don't you, you, you feel me? You you don't just give things. You think you helping somebody, and a lot of times they're not in the situation to be able to understand to help you trying to give. Them. Man, so, that right there, that's hard too. Yeah, that is a good word for today. <laughs> no, it's that's true. No, that's gonna be the like good. You're word. not helping that person. No, every time somebody says something with significance yeah. and relevance, I and it's, and it's impactful to yeah. my perspective on. Yeah. I say that's the good word for the day. So that's, that's, the, good, yeah. that's the good word. No, 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 it's true. You just got to be careful on where you saying you're helping somebody when you're really not. You're really doing something with a gift that God put in you that you shouldn't be doing. And they, because they're not even Cause in that position. Because they're not, they can't handle it. Yeah. And you really done looked at them and tried to give them something and you miscalled it. Yeah. Because you no. should have seen that in them because you, you trying to help so much that you didn't help them. You hurt them. No, I, yeah, <laughs> no, no, the, you know, because you know what that's called, though? Sometimes we know what that's called. What is it called? It's enabling. That's mm -hmm. it. That's it. That's what that's mm -hmm. called. True story. So you, you, you thought I made this funny little face and you thought I didn't understand what the hell you said. <laughs> I just <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> what is he doing, you know? But no, man. But like, you get me, though. You I feel me. It. No, yeah, you no, feel that's me. A, exactly what it is. No, man, you know? I mean, I mean and you know, that's one of the things where, uh, you know, I try to live my life by, and, you know, another thing that my daddy told me. Um, is um, you know people are gonna remember not what you say but how you make how you, them feel. That's it. You know, so I just try to be as genuine as I can to every to each and everybody that I meet. No matter how what are you coming down the ladder or are you going up the ladder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It don't matter. I'm gonna still be the same dirt. It's hey, gonna be you that's, know, and that's keeping it real. Straight that's what we mud, used to baby. say Straight out the mud baby. We keep it real Straight you know out the mud baby Let me ask you a question We're not gonna all, do this Let's uh, uh, no, give me your <laughs> top three artists Of all time You really doing it today um, Hey hey hold up You in the south brother I'm Any say genre that. You know, so Don't come over here It doesn't have to be yeah, rap yeah, yeah. Look how you look um, <laughs> any, any genre I'm, I'm gonna say Top uh, three Number one Nas is one of my favorite MCs Here we go you know, um, yeah, yeah. You talk like yourself. you talk like okay. you from the East Coast. I knew this was gonna happen. Yeah, I got a little. Gonna turn this whole damn platform. <laughs> up. This nigga here for the recognize Nas, Jay Z, and uh, no. Biggie. No, I mean you're, almost. You in the damn Dallas? Well, almost. And but, you go, Nas, nah, Jay Z, and nah, Biggie. I'm nah, giving nah, him nah, the crown. No, nah, don't. No, nah, don't get it twisted, okay. man. I listen. To, I didn't. So the thing is, is that I, when I came back to Texas, I really gained or grew to appreciate Pimp C 
music that's and the, that's the key word right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the key word. I think right he there. watched the episode, the, so he knows what to say. Seen his damn mm. show. Boy, no. you re, you own nah, something. So, nah, so you own something. Nah, nah. Now, now, now say it again. What you just said? Nah, have you seen any of her shows? Wait, man, no, nah, he ain't seen it. Nah, Go ahead. Watts, shout out to my, my brother Watts, <laughs> man, in the building, man. He's the one who called me out here, man. I've been rocking with him for years, bro. Yeah, who don't? And it was crazy, know, well, who bro. Who don't rock with Watts? No, Watts is a good dude, bro. Genuine dude, genuine guy, bro. It's always been love every ever since we've met. And um, the reason that I say that is because he sent me the link, so I did see a little bit of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm. I can tell that you probably got a, um, you know, super duper love for Pimp C. But I yeah, do too. Yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah, I'm real. Like, I, like right here, it hits yeah, me. Yeah. Right here. No, for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna say, say that. I'm gonna say my much. favorite MCs right now. Um, or people that I I, I like you to said, listen to. And who did he say? Nas. 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 And, and, and Nas, so who's your number two? I heard Nas say boss talking his last song. I'm going to say. I'm going to get off my damn platform. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say uh, Nipsey. Nip, Nipsey. Now, I met Nipsey. Good guy. Go Nipsey. Like yeah, I met Nipsey, Nipsey too. Real good guy. Yeah. Real good guy. Um, and I'm going to do some R&B in there. Um, number three. Let me go with uh, Aaliyah. Aaliyah, we hadn't gotten an Aaliyah. Never. Niggas slept on Aaliyah. They didn't know. Yeah, Aaliyah. I mean, like I said, she rocked the boat and and all that. And the reason I was the last one. Now, the reason I say Aaliyah is because, like I said, I grew up in Virginia Beach during that time that Virginia Beach was that Motown era. So we had Timberland, the Neptunes, Clips, uh, Pharrell, uh, Missy, um, Knott's Raw. Bing. Mm -hmm. Nas Raw made all the Buster Rhymes. Well, made a lot of Buster Rhymes hit beats back then. Um, Teddy Riley, he was in Virginia Beach at that time. Everybody know what type of producer Teddy Riley is. Um, and it was one other person. Oh, Bing Dog, and he made the Rulers back. He made he produced for Jay Z and things like that. So uh, back then, that time, like that seven five seven era was Motown mm. because we had. I mean, Timberland was doing all the and Timberland and the Neptunes were doing all the production. You had R and B basically was Virginia Beach's sound, which was Justin Timberlake, Aaliyah, Genuine. I mean, all of that, even that sound. So even when they created that sound, you had LSG who basically took that sound. You had uh, Keith Sweat who basically took that sound. I mean, it was people that did he name Chris Brown. I didn't name Chris Brown. Chris Brown is from down there. He is from Virginia. Virginia. He's from uh, Peters. Yeah. He's from Peters. He's from like yeah. Richmond, Petersburg he area. Beat on women. <laughs> no, I think Rihanna beat on him. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. straighten it up, then. I'm just trying no, to. I, think, I just got my microphone. I think so they, I just say something. Just I, bam. I think they. Got, <laughs> I think they got into a fight. I, and, and oh, yeah, let's bring it back up. He's sick of this. He don't want to hear about it no more. He is sick of it. I yeah. will be sick of it too. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. When you're young, he was you just, young. It's some things I did when I was young. But yeah. at the end of the day, you learn from him. But see. Let me go there, man. See, God put a thorn in your side to keep you from being too prideful. No, so for that sure. He put that in there to keep you coming down. So you see, and that's where you're going you're gonna to really grow. Ah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, see, yeah. That, 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 that builds integrity. Yeah. See, that was then for what's going on now in his life, and he don't even know that. Yeah. It's keeping well, him I'll down. I tell you, man, this that. pod, that's why this podcast That's is hard. Good. That's hard, though. That's hard. <laughs> it's the truth. Like, when, I, when, it's, hey, when, it, when it when it resonates, it's, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I got a question, Dirk. What's up? It's a kid that's trying to get into music, and uh, his family, you know, they dysfunctional, and he's trying to get into it. He's about 16. Uh, how, what would you tell him to help him to try to understand? So this is, what he, this is the first thing he's going to need to do. He's going to need to register for ASCAP or BMI to make sure he get his publishing okay. because the first thing, the first record or anything that he cut, he can ensure that he's going to get paid for it if okay. it – goes viral mm. so, um so ASCAP is going to be one of the first things second thing is going to be figure out which distribution company is going to be best for you okay um the third part is probably should have been first is actually create some good music exactly. get get with a good producer um and when I say a good producer somebody that I would say you can partner up with and what okay. I mean that y'all pretty much split everything whether the cost of the marketing, the cost of the video production or whatever, mm -hmm. and be strategic. Um, read some books about corporate, mm -hmm. uh, America and how corporate organizations run their company, mm -hmm. and you implement that into your music, into wow. being a rapper, you yeah. know, basically. That's good info. You sit down every week, have an admin meeting. I mean, basically, in that, 
My people's put me on to it. I haven't even finished watching it, but the Barry Gordy okay. special. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Pretty much all that special, just watch that. Look at everything that he did. Uh-huh. Look, go read a corporate book of how corporate America works and the things in the corporate infrastructure, mm-hmm. and you apply that to the rap game I and how it. you move. What's the biggest mistake that you see uh, of these artists out here making right now? Um, I think the biggest mistake that artists are making um, is what we talked about earlier, is the uh, before your time, like, Okay. Acting too mm-hmm. big. The fame, the, yeah. the fame, fame, the fame bug where it's like, you know, people that are way more famous than you or way more humble than you. Dang, ain't that something? Boy, he said that. Don't I say that every episode? The more money they get, the more humble they become. And I, and, but I noticed these niggas around me talking and acting a fool. So I know they probably ain't really got no whole bunch of bread like that. Yeah. Because when I meet the, the higher ups, the upper echelon, they're more humble. But wouldn't you think that's caused because when you first get all that money, you act a fool with it. You do all the crazy Oh, you stuff. learn, yeah. So as you Yeah, it's a start, process. If you don't lose it all. Some of them don't even have money like that, though. <laughs> yeah, they never got it. They just acting a fool. Act a fool. You know, Instagram got these boys, they on here, and it, you can make it look any way you want to. But I've told people, if you fake in real life, you fake on Instagram. It's really just you being who you are. You you fake. If you real, you're real. You get real. You know what I'm saying? But if you fake, even down beneath, you know, it, when people couldn't tell, it comes out. Because, no, it does. You know, I mean, because, you know, what's done in the dark going to come to the light yeah. for sure. Have you ever, somebody uh, kind of made you feel a certain way, like that they was, you know, somebody that they really wasn't when you met them? Like, damn, I thought they would have had a little more going than that. They fake, They tricked me. Um, or she put on that that certain filter, and you said, "Damn, she don't look like she looking." She oh look. boy, catfish, <laughs> boy, basket, hush puppies, fries, catfishing. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm just man, saying. You know, they they, they, got, every, they got a filter on everything. Man. Yeah, it'd be super duper inflated, man. You know, and even you know, and even with me, you know, with dealing with the um with the. The ladies and the models, oh my God. Like, you have to have patience because, yeah. like, a woman that is beautiful and that has been given pretty much everything to mm-hmm. her, what pretty mm-hmm. much she's been, you know, catered to majority of the time or, you know, has the way where she can get what she wants or she uses her physical appearance or, mm-hmm. you know, to get what she wants. I mean, trying to deal with that sometimes is, man, that is. It can be tough, you yeah, know. Yeah. But uh, what I what I do realize is that people do have a lot more misconception about v- women that are pretty. You know, people mm-hmm. think that they always get hit on, which sometimes they do get hit on. Let's talk about it. But it's not as much as they probably you probably think, <laughs> because well, sometimes because I, some people are intimidated. Well, yeah, women like, like 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 literally the bad. You would think like sometimes the baddest chick in the club won't get hollered at. Yeah. Yeah. I know. She's but, but, the baddest one in the club. Yeah. But nobody felt like that they were in a position in to even holler at her. Yeah, like, or even or uh, even or if she or, getting hollered at yeah. it's by some by June bug or, or some shit like or, that. Or or they just they can feel her, her spirit permeate permeate now that it's not really something that you want to deal with. It's a lot of uh, that's why Kevin Samuels is doing so good. Ooh, Kevin Samuels be speaking the truth. No, no, because it's a, see, but my, my wife don't but Kevin Samuels be speaking the truth. But it's, all it's I'm hard. saying is it's a lot of women out here. That have been, uh, they mind and the way that they were raised and the way that society has projected our, our people, it, it it has interjected something into them that pretty much is causing them to have a hard time dealing with things in today's society. Well, when, what? Did, absolutely. Did you hear what I just said? No, I, had I, to, I had to get it right. No, you, you what you're right, you what you said is absolutely right. And what people don't understand is that all of this shit is programming yeah yeah everything is programming even down to like i believe in god right but i've been programmed to believe that god is white with blue eyes you and understand progr- oh that's what they would like i grew up with society. jehovah witness yeah society. you know what i'm saying society was it's different society. it's like even when even with the whole with with how with our belief system even that i mean that comes from europeans yeah <laughs> i mean all of the, like even the I mean, all of this stuff is like the information that's out right now, man. I really feel like that people should really try to step outside of a box and look at it because everything that we do is basically 
marketing and promotion to us through the TV, through mind yeah. control, through TV. And um, I mean, down to everything that we do. I mean, even like, it's, I mean, it's everything that we do, man. Yeah, it's, it's a program. I always try to teach people is, you know, um, like you said, a European, uh, white, white guy with blue eyes. Never, you know, I never felt that way because of my study and research. I never felt that way. Well, and now when I I'm see saying when what, it was given, when it, when it was first, you? when it was first presented to you, though, no, when it was first presented to you, I didn't really believe like that. When it was first presented to I you, I didn't really, I didn't. But when it was first, listen, but, I didn't have time for no religion, spirituality, none of that stuff. But man. when you first, when it, but when you first saw it, when it was first presented to you, period, that's what it was. No, it he wasn't. never, huh? Yeah. I wouldn't. Period. I'm telling you. I, I mean, even think when you like saw it on TV, even when you I saw a church, even when you saw a mural, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't into it. I was, I, I'm not I, saying that you was into I it. Into it to where I wanted to you, even understand it. When you lost, he didn't think when you, about. Yeah, it. but when, it's, when it's you not, lost, see, see, you're not trying to figure about getting saved and all that. See, you out here trying to figure out how to sell dope, how to get a lot of women. I, see, you're a good dude because you're that. older now. But when I was young, I didn't have time to think about that. And if you tried to bring it to me, I was gonna run from you. I'm getting the hell away from you because I'm trying to do this right here and it's way more important than that. No, but the way I, you think. I know I understand what you're saying. I'm not saying I'm saying but when you first saw it. it I'm just saying well, even when you first saw it, even when it was brought to you, even when your friends talk about it or you my friends didn't talk about it. My friends talk about trying to hustle. I'm being real. We I'm talking about like from we, the, I'm talking know, about you from know how niggas get so, high now. I see them on TV. They be like, so you never went to church. No, your grandma never. Never. Your grandma I, I, never. I, went, I wasn't a church goer. I never joined the church in my life. But you never you know went to saying? church in the and, beginning when you yeah, was young. I went, but I didn't go. Did you ever go? Yeah, but I was trying to get some candy or something. It but, was not like that. But, but even when it was presented to you, well, it's no. That's, you, you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, okay, you had to take it serious. But when you young, no, I'm not saying. No, that no, you, listen, I'm saying I'm just saying the program fact. All I'm hold saying on, is the program on, fact. On, I'm not saying the program I, fact. I get what you're saying, and I get what you're saying. But I'm, I, I'm more with him because, like for me, I saw that. She I wouldn't grew, do that. I know. I grew up in Jamaica, and I grew up in a church, and all of that. They didn't have a picture of the white Jesus and all of that, in, not even in the church. Um, they'll have a cross up, but that's about it. But who's but on the cross? I never, somebody, it, usually they got somebody nailed on the cross. It's a wooden okay. person, I'm so you can't, sure. no, it's I'm a wooden make, person, so there was no color okay. to the person. But the, but the hair stringy. It ain't wooly. You don't even, okay. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying no. to get some questions. Okay, I understand, some questions that, I understand that, but. As a child, when you're going, number one, as a child going, you falling asleep in church. You're not even, you, you know, uh, what I'm yeah. you know so what I mean, I'm saying I know that. Is, I know no, that for sure. Nobody so what I'm is saying, paying so what attention I'm saying, to that, you're not, man. You're not thinking that, is, when you get older, you start to think about those type of things. As a child, you're not thinking, unless you're just a special child that you just. You, not, you're not a that. special child. You're, no, you're not thinking like that. I'm not saying, I'm not even saying you're thinking no, about that. So what I'm saying is like a Bible story. Way. What so I'm saying is like even a Bible, that sort of way. even a Bible story, right? And it has cartoon characters and all that no, stuff. No, no, what you, what, explain, what you explain that watchtower they get y'all yes, jail with. Exactly. I wasn't a jail with we, witness. Yeah, we know about that watchtower. We had watchtower. That watchtower. That was presented to me when I was three, four years old. Okay, so I didn't get the job. Listen, you understand what I'm saying? It depends on the religion because in, yeah, in, we, in, don't, we don't. Do I was Anglican, so okay. Anglican. We didn't have all of that problem. You know what I mean? I, it's only when I came here to the states, everything was black, white, bully, straight. It was. Yeah. It, it, it became such a thing where you had to think about that. Back then, we weren't thinking about that. We just yeah. think about okay, you're going to church. You go to church for this or that, whatever. That's about it. You're done. No, I mean, like I said, I I I, I believe in God, man. I went I went to TD 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 Jakes. Church when I was eighteen, his men, the men conference that he has in North Carolina. Yeah. I went down there. It was like thirty thousand men, mm -hmm. grown men, praying and yeah, crying, in Virginia too, and all of that stuff, right? I so I felt the presence. I know that it exists, yeah. but I'm just saying, like sometimes the pr the, I really, the like presentation, the presentation. Sometimes I just have a. Well, I think the most important thing is dirt that you got to read, man, and not only yeah. read, listen, read, research. I think that's the biggest thing, and I think that's what what differs me from a lot of others is that when I did my research, it was in depth and it, I tied my camel to a date tree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I looked at the hot, I was figuring like the hot desert sand. I was, I, I couldn't see Jesus no other way, but with, 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 with hair like wool and bronze, cause that's what I was reading. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking, and then I understood that it was in the East and that's where man was first 
discovered and I, 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 would, I would look for scribes and how did the canon scripture come together so I didn't get it like the with the watchtower but I understand where you're coming from when I got it I was older too and I had went through something that made me say man but my mama died let me see what she was tripping on about this Bible yeah now, and that's when it hit me and so I wanted to understand what she was really reading and if it was real and mm -hmm. then I started studying Hinduism, Nawabuism. I started studying Buddhism. I started studying oh, man, Jehovah so. Witness. I started studying he the, the Quran. Oh, wow. I started everything. Yeah. So, and then I'm like, oh, this is what this is. And then I'm like, this here it, it ain't matching with this here. So it become a puzzle to me. So at the end of the day, every time I would do that, I got closer to God in Christ. I'm just being real. Mm -hmm. But I had looked and looked at all. Oh, I'm looking at everything. And then I'm like, okay, but what about this? And th what about that? And that's how I came up with mine. So, but when they was trying to tell me about it early on, I was too busy trying to be in them streets, man. I ain't care nothing about that. Or get a little girl, I started knocking them off at an early age. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't into all that. I'm just being real. Yeah. So I wasn't, I so didn't you take didn't, nothing you serious. Didn't, you, didn't, you didn't find nothing out until about what, about what age? 24, 25. Okay. You see where I'm coming from? But before that, all hell was breaking loose. No, I was, I was the one early. doing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I, I, I was introduced to so that's early. How I, but that's why I never was a member because when I read the Bible, it didn't say you had to be a member. It didn't say that. A, it, it said that God, what you know, God God does not dwell in a house made with hands. What, mm -hmm. what, so what will you build me? So I knew that that was fake. So I just don't believe the but, same way. But even with the Bible, do you believe that some of those stories? Are, I've heard this. You are, can say a are, change, are, a made up. No, not oh, okay. change or made up. Just taking from other scriptures or scriptures cri where. Uh, for like the story of uh, Horus I mean it's very similar to Jesus Okay I mean that doesn't Well that, but think about it But when it, when you date back to biblical sense You're thinking about Because the, the history and the research that I've done Puts the date of the Bible before everything else For me when I researched it so at the end of the day Everything well, I, else I, becomes something that could have been mimicked To me Now that's just the way I believe you said so. So the Bible was the so first you, form of literature. When you look at the Canossia description, look at the, scri the scrolls and everything, and how they kept finding them. How uh, King James sent. Secret and when you say the first form of literature, so yeah. what? So what about hi hi hieroglyphics? That's that's yeah, that, that's I, not literature. Definitely, definitely literature. But like I said, my belief system put me in. The scrolls, the pen. I'm just, listen, I just have questions, listen, brother. Me, yeah, we'll get there. I just have questions. But listen, That's the it. scroll, the Pentateuch, and stuff like that. So it's all about how you believe, man. It's up to you. Your mind is so powerful. Anything even that you make your Enoch, truth. Even with the book of Enoch. Which I read. And that's not, I mean, it's like so many... And the book of Paul. I mean, which, and the book which of, not in the Bible that's presented correct. to us. Like, uh, and Maccabees. We I could mean, go like, on for days. Yeah, you know I know, but I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, I, I, the, it's... it's it's those type of details and facts. Like even when they give slaves the Bible and they left out Moses. Correct. Chapter. Now that's you know what I mean. But people did that. I know. I know. But what, what I'm saying. But I'm. But even saying. But even the what you presented the Bible. What you presented. Because I read the Bible too. Right when I was smaller. When I was young. And I really feel like the Bible is very impactful. I feel like that if you read it, it will talk to you a certain type of way. I feel like it is definitely a powerful book. It wouldn't be. It, it wouldn't even be talked about if it wasn't a powerful. It's book. a powerful book. But. I just sometimes the Quran's it, a powerful I, I book. question the origin of how it's presented to us. I like, think, or if this has been recycled. I like that. Whitewashed. And da -da -da -da. I like that. You feel we, what I'm we're saying? way over into something, but I can say, you know, the reason it's an issue and the reason it becomes a question is because of how it's pushed on you by the masses in America. But you go to certain other countries and you wouldn't never even, that wouldn't be the narrative. You know what I mean? So you have this certain thing where you've, Dug into it because it's a Jehovah Witness. They sticking it to you at three years old. Man, you see I was I'm knocking saying? on doors at four four <laughs> years old. <laughs> see, got them watch so it's personal. I right. see. I met them at my house. They come through. They knocking. Man, you know, look but, here. Good people. Good Don't people, get me wrong. Good people. Good people. Good. It's a lot of people. people. Wholesome people. But the thing you got to one understand. thing I used to always say about the Jehovah Witness or a lot of other religions is the fact that. I wish other religions would go, more aggressive would like go them, huh? knock on everybody's yeah. door because that's what Jesus did in the Bible. He went from town to town walking, preaching the word, you know, talking. Yeah, to, but he wasn't knocking on nobody's door. I know he wasn't knocking don't on nobody's door. Don't come on my house. Door. I don't care. Well, don't come on my house no Saturday. What I'm saying is that, you know, everybody goes to this building over here or that church over there or whatever and expect that everybody's going to come to these places for help. 
Mm -hmm. You need to go to the people instead of always waiting for everybody to come to you. No, I, and that's I, what mean, I, like I feel about, that. And that's what I loved about what they did. No, I think, like I said, I like even some of the things that they say, um, like it's different from regular Christianity. Like they believe that Jesus, uh, God, and the Holy Spirit are two different, all three different things. They believe that you pray to Jesus in order to get to God, but you're really praying to Jehovah, but you have to go through his son. And the Holy Spirit is something completely different, right? So I, I believe that some of the things that they say, it's like some of the stuff is good, but some of the stuff is like, especially not letting kids celebrate their birthday. <laughs> that's, God, what, that's what you're mad about. That's what you're mad about. The nigga, be, no the nigga missed by 30 Christmases. He didn't get no presents. All the other kids getting presents. And now he got a personal issue with it. Look, but look, guess you what? Me? But guess what? I, and was, I get it. I was kneeling. I was kneeling before Cap Colin Kaepernick on the flag. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think the biggest thing you 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 said is that uh, you've been soul searching. That's what you said. No, and, and yeah, I mean, I, and, no, no, no. It see, it, I see it in you that you went through a lot of phases where you were trying to get it figured out, and I think that's a good thing. That's what we all do. That's what we no, all yeah, do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that, big ups to that. I mean, you know why wouldn't I mean? why wouldn't I want to be tied to the highest power and in I the think universe? You, and, and I you think, know what I'm saying? I think of course you, I want to be tied to the highest power. That's a good search. I think really? you should keep searching like I am. Yeah. I'm gonna keep on move, keep it moving. One guy was and you will forever keep searching. Yeah, you know what I get there. His grandma used to tell much new. It's just so much information out yeah. there where yeah. it's just like. Well, you googling ooh. things now, and it's misusing you and taking you and ripping you. Just no, I, I, no. Sometimes I pick up a man, book. Man, that Google hell. Google, yeah. but, go, but honestly, Google. <laughs> Google just got like that before when they started the internet. They didn't figure that. They didn't think that it would be this powerful. Yeah. No. yeah so right. originally, when a lot of this information is out right now, they did not want to be out. But now it's definitely being controlled. Like everything is controlled. Everything is controlled. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah. Like man, they have they have us so tied down and on the grid and matrix. People don't even realize it's 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 really bad though. I mean, to the point where, like sometimes even now right now, and people might say I'm crazy. Look, I'm okay. Look, look right look, in that camera. Listen, look. Is he crazy? Look at Listen, him. listen. Have you ever yeah, thought crazy? No, listen, hell. listen, have, listen. <laughs> both of y'all, right? Go ahead. Have you ever thought something? Uh huh. Didn't even say it out loud. Uh huh. And then you saw it on your Instagram feed or your Facebook feed. You were smoking weed. Have you? Right? He was smoking no. that damn weed. I mean, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I know what it was. <laughs> but have you? You're paranoid at that point, son. That's that got that good. No, no. From California. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> no, I it, it has Literally. happened. No, it has happened that yeah, yeah. I could you, be here yeah. in front. We've talked about it. No, we time. ain't talked about it. And Make him leave no, him out no, that no, mindset. No, no, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that we have said something even just to each other. And then by the time you scroll in through, you see the advertisement come up yeah. for that. We're like, okay, they listening. No, I'm saying they things. Listen. I'm saying thoughts. No, Recently, not a no. Thought part. In the last three months, did you take that shot? No, I didn't. Okay. In the la I, I, I won't take that shot either. In the last three, I'm just trying to figure out how they control your six, mind. I'm gonna say six months. No, because this is not even me. This is even more with my dad. Your like, dad and you doing it? No, I mean it's been weird. Well, it's let's like, talk about it. Like I was thinking, like maybe like three weeks ago, I was like, damn, I kind of want to get a new short sleeve designer shirt, some type okay. of designer okay. shirt. I'm here. I was. I didn't even say it out loud. And what happened? And sure. And surely enough, I went on my shit, and that was. My it's a coincidence. That's not no, a coincidence. That's not a coincidence. He said something. It was something about like he said he thought he needed to get some turmeric. He was like, "Oh, I'm almost out of turmeric." In his mind. In his mind, and it popped up on his feed. Yeah. And he he said rail. He called me rail. Cause that's what they call me. You know, my my middle name is rail. You know, in Texas, that everybody call you by your middle uh -huh, name. You know. Uh -huh. What happened? And uh, uh -huh. he said, "Rail." <laughs> he said, uh, "Yeah, I got this term." He's like, "He smoked too, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> Do he be smoking? CBD, he, yeah. CBD, yeah, CBD. Y'all both high. No, nah, that's CBD. <laughs> that's CBD. <laughs> but I tell you, this day. but, nah, but I, yeah, but yeah, like, y'all going through it I, like, look, together. No, seriously, <laughs> nah. y'all niggas I, both on weed and, like and, that, and, and I feel smoking like, like hell. Well, I tell you, I'm not the first person to say this, though, yeah, man. I'm listening. I'm serious, man. Think about it. Just one time, just do like this. Mm, think about it, and just go to your phone and see if it don't. Because honestly, what it don't happen, bro. No, yeah, no, no. Nah, nah, because honestly, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because it's really scientific. Because it's yeah. frequencies. It's frequencies. Yeah. So you you frequencies. You want, them, you want them brothers to think about that? Uh, what they call it, that that five G. You one of them guys. You thought 5G uh, was Corona. Nah. You the 5G Corona nah, guy. Nah, I mean, honestly. I'm just trying to, feel, I'm trying to meet nah, you where you at, brother. Nah, they put, 
<laughs> now, honestly, though, with the whole Corona thing, man, they yeah. they started putting out as much st- fake stuff as they possibly could. But some stuff was real when they put out because I had this one video. I sent it to a couple of people and that video was completely removed. And it was basically like the whole breakdown of how I was in China and all that stuff. Yeah. And they completely removed that. The whole thing with even with um mm. with uh Michelle Obama being a man, you can't even go on YouTube and Google that and something to pop up. But people been talking about it so much. Do you but think if you she's go- a man? Huh? What do you think Michelle Obama? Huh? Man? You Who did? said that? No, you said that. No, I said if you go on there and Google it and you wow. try to pull it up, it I won't see pop what's up. Going on now. I, I mean, <laughs> No, this done really came to a head no, now. No, no, no. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying it's true or not. Yeah, this but what? But what? Smoking that weed. No, no. But what? what this but what I'm smoking, saying. You know. No, this is what I'm saying. You though. think Michelle Obama's a man? I don't know. I mean, I didn't say. I don't. I mean, I saw Ellen thing. Her, I saw some things swinging in her pants a little bit. But that was on Ellen. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm, I'm not on. saying. Look. Look, I don't know. Look, I don't know. But all I'm saying is this. This right. This what is all. What the hell going on listen, here, buddy? Just buddy? listen to what I'm saying. Just listen. Just listen to what I'm saying. Right. When you go to actually try to Google that, now you've seen that all over Instagram, all over Instagram, but if you actually go and try to Google that on YouTube or anything, no videos pop up. Not even a video of somebody making some type of spoof or anything. Nothing pops up. That's weird to me. That's just weird to me because well, you can find ask, anything. On, you can you find did. anything. You can find anything, any fake or baloney or crap let or something that did. doesn't mean any type of relevance or anything that you don't want to put any energy to. You can pull that up easy. What about Caitlyn? Is it what, what's the Caitlyn Jenner? No, it, um, the dad is Caitlyn, ain't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can pull something on Caitlyn, can't you? Yeah, you can. Okay, so you know, at the end of the day, you know, I don't know uh, Michelle Obama. She she got two kids, according to the way they set her up. And, and, and I don't know about that, man. You see, I don't know, man. That's some other stuff, man. I don't know, man. Like I said, man, I think outside the box, man. Yeah, man, what box is this? You outside know. of you nah, outside man. The damn I, box. I mean, I can show you a couple things. It looks kind of weird. It just to me, it's just you know what? You, it just looks weird. Some stuff looks weird to me. I don't know. Do you hear voices too? No, I don't hear voices. Okay, I don't hear voices. See, see sometimes see, no. You ain't never heard no, no voices. I hear no voices. But all I'm saying is that this man, I am just <laughs> open. I'm open to think outside of the box. I'm I not mean, just going. I'm that, not just. I'm not going to just download whatever mainstream media tells me, I don't think or I even whatever either. the internet tells me. I'm going to filter it. I'm going to see it for what it is, and then I'm going to make my own. And you, as decision. you should, as but, you should. Like I said, but with, I with some of these, with some of the things that I'm saying, I don't know, but. For me, it's just peculiar. It's certain things that it just makes me scratch well, my head and be like. Do you think you're a clone or the, the kids clones or what? What Do you believe that the children are real? Huh? The Obama's children and Michelle's yeah. children. Yeah. They raised them in the White House for eight years. Yeah, I think they real. Okay. Because I just, just want to get a stare, you know. Mother. Because Something at the end of the day, I'm gonna show you this one picture, man. It's just, it's just weird. It's uh, just uh, weird. Michelle Obama, you have this fascination with her. No, I don't. It's just, it's that's just an example. Like Infatuation. It's, nah, it's just an example. I mean, like, when look, I voted for Obama the first time. The I was, first, oh, this is getting personal uh, now. No, nah, I voted for him the first time. This one got real it, personal. It was all. It, it you was, didn't vote for him the second time. No, nah, I didn't vote. Why for him not? Time. Huh? Why not? I don't know. You thought he was fake? No, nah, I think that. uh I just didn't think, yeah, I know. Uh, look, <laughs> yeah. look, I don't know, man. Look, I just feel like that Malcolm X uh-huh. holding that shotgun yeah. in this window, mm-hmm. looking down, that's a real American hero. Okay. Martin Luther King, uh-huh. even though with all the antics and all the little mm-hmm. Playboy stuff off mm-hmm. camera, whatever, still a real American hero because he sacrificed himself and even his family for what he believed for a greater cause. Come on, with the Obama scenario. I feel like that Obama is perceived as black Jesus and he really didn't, he wasn't holding no rifle in the window, trying to, you know. I mean, did he have to have a lot of backlash and deal with all, a lot of the racist stuff? I mean, was it still hard being him? Absolutely. Well, so do, do I feel like he could have did more for black people? Are you yes, saying I think that so. Obama he sold us gave reparations. out? You hear me? We should have got reparations. Did he sell us out? You saw them, do you see how much I money? I asked you a question. Yes, do you see how much money they just cut for the stimulus for COVID? You yeah. don't think they could have cut reparations? And my thing is that even with reparations, you set up reparations yeah, like this. Like, look, you set up reparations like this. You give every black person a million dollars and say you can only spend it with black people. See, simple. And how you do it is that you go, you file a suit with the United Nations. Watch, you playing a trick on me? No, listen, <laughs> listen. You file, you file, listen, you file a suit with the United Nations 
So then it brings black people because right now even with black people we don't have no own nation. We are as a color black. That's what we identify. How can you how can you have a nation? How can we even do that? I mean that's I mean look man you want to talk about it I'm gonna talk about it no I think I think you've brought up some valid points I'm just saying do you believe in counseling huh <laughs> I do believe in counseling okay I, have I, you I, ever had a counseling I've had I've had counseling but this this is the thing right? I'm asking you do see, you you because I, I mean I believe in that see see but even like even what you, even with what you're saying right now that's a program method so you don't believe in no counseling? no no listen to what let me finish. That is a program method. When you say something that is against the norm or outside the thinking, you're supposed to be put in a box as conspiracy or crazy or you don't think like the rest of us. But in all actuality, all I'm doing is using my own brain waves to decipher. I like it. What's going on? I like it. In all actuality, but did you hear what I just said? No, I mean, I'm just saying. No, I think it's unique. I, I really do, and I believe that. I think, a, but even, even, I think it's but, unique. But even what you, but even with, but even with your approach, that is something that was programmed and taught. You know who talks about that? Who? Uh, the writer of the Pale, uh, Pale, Pale White Horse. What's his name? He talks about that in his book. He talks about just what you did as a method to not get you to think outside the box or be with the program. So I, I know I agree with you. You understand what I'm no, saying? No, I agree with. I'm it. just saying, brother. Listen, I agree with it because dirt. I'm gonna be honest she, with you. It's a lot in my of. Cup. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe she I put something in no, my no, cup, no, man. No, you don't have to be talking crazy up in here, man. No, I just think I think you I think you're just you saying what you what you feel. And at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with having your own sense of how I feel about something. I'm cool with it. I can rock with it. No. To be honest with you, it's a, until I mean Kanye was doing a little bit of that. Yeah. I'm being real, and they said he was crazy, and he got a billion dollars after that. So yeah, because I can rock with it. I know it can. I know it can still move. It can still excel. I mean, even with what Kanye said, right? I was really appalled by what he said, but when I really thought about it, was he wrong? You rock with that too, huh? No, I, I think it was disrespectful as far as it being a choice about a slave, right? Because you can't be a choice like that's you. We we have no idea what it felt like to be a slave, so we can't even say that. Like you know what I'm saying? But. The whole part where freed the slaves to go work for other other white people. I mean, that's kind of true. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the white people own the land. I mean, black people that own. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the whole choose to be a slave thing. No, I don't agree with that. But the whole freedom to go work for. I mean, I don't know. You don't know. I mean, it, I mean, it kind of makes. I mean, you know. You know Kanye. Uh, yeah, shout out saying. to Kanye. He's a great uh, producer. He's an innovative mind, man. A great producer mind. too, though. Don't produce it. Don't play. And no, uh, you, you're you're a producer. Yeah, man. I so got tons uh, let me of beats, ask this: man. Are you gonna bring me some beats back on here that I can listen to? Yeah, because I want to do like a thing where I, we do like a listening session with a couple of producers. I already did it with Mad Max and uh, a couple of cats that uh, Ser Sergeant J. You heard of him? Uh, he did that bus yeah. beat and all that. So I like to listen to the, the sounds. Like if you make something, no, up, I got fire. Beats. You see what I'm saying? Though? No, I, I want to bring fire. them on and then yeah. Jam I do this. Out to I him. do this thing called Beat Wars too. Yeah, that's what he he was talking about. Yeah, I do he was beat, in it too. Yeah, I do Beat Wars. I actually host the Camp Out Beat Battle. Shout out to my brother Campion Bond. I host that, and I actually have my own thing too called Beat Wars, and uh, where we do a producer showcase and a battle, and we give away money for the dopest producer and stuff like that. So I would just be trying to curate a whole bunch of events, but I'm well, I definitely got some. I got some beats and some bars for you. Okay. We love you, man. I love you too, brother. Yeah, yeah dirt. We love you. I appreciate you. you. Once brother. you come on this platform, we're going to love you. No, nah, I appreciate you. And guess you, what? We're going to do, Steph, we're going to love him through it. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to love you through it. Whatever it is. We with you. Nigga, I'm, I'm, I love you right where you at. Look, I look. Yeah. I'm like, look, the crazier I talk, the better it may be for views, you know what I'm saying? I, I get it. Is that what you're doing? I knew I was getting bumped. I knew it. There had to be something you were driving. I'm trying to figure out where you going. Like, what is this? What is this boy no, no, saying? No, what is he no, saying? No, but you honestly, just, you were honest about I'm what you feel. I'm just honest. No. Like and like I said, at the end of the day, I don't have all the answers. But it's just, I feel like that even with us doing what we're doing, right? So just shameless plug, right quick. So I dropped this album called Roots of Soul Two, right? Okay. And it's basically my contribution to the culture, the black culture, the state okay. of black culture. Okay. And through this, it's just different skits from different people saying different stuff. And it's just really to start conversation. Because even when I went, you know, I, let, I was playing my music for my man. Shout out to my brother Nick in Cali. And we was talking about, he was like, really, what does black revolution look like? He's like, what does it look like? We're going to go get the guns. 
who makes the bullets? Who makes the bullets? Is there any black manufacturing book? Like, when you really talk about it, it's like, man, we so far from that. And you know, and even with my album, it was more or less about sparking some type of conversation about what it is we can do in order to stop being a second class citizen in the land that we pretty much built. You're back you know now. You're back now. See, you I know? like that. You're back. What you're talking about now, I can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> And you step back into the room, my nigga. Yeah, baby. My boy back. back. He back, baby. And my boy back. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? I get it. I I get it. I'm with you. That's my that that was my whole and it's called Rooster Soul 2. The deluxe version is 20 songs, man. Man. I'm I'm gonna beg you just to listen to it. Let me ask you this, man. Uh, because you said streaming is you are you really making money in music? Let's be real. Um, Be real now. Don't lie now, they call the cameras on. Are you really making money in music? It depends on what money. No, no, no. How much? I don't want to know. But I'm just money. saying, in your heart, do you really feel like your music is making you money or is it your hustle? No, See, now my, I'm interviewing now. No, it's definitely my hustle. Okay. Um, music. Because people need to hear this. Like, like a lot of people get on this show talking about their music, their beats, they this. But I really don't know if this music is making them money. Like I they mean, saying, music, and I got a guy coming on that Aldi 300. He asked me that question. I said, you know, these niggas broke in front of me? Nah, man. The thing is, is that with music, like you can make money off of music, but you have to figure out what your niche is going to be or what how you can get to a bag. Are you making money so, in music? Yeah, I've made some money in music. No, no, no. Are you making it? Like when you drop an album, is the money coming back? Uh, depends on how much money you're talking about. <laughs> Enough money to just, live off of. Uh, enough to pay um, all your bills and, and to take fly care out your family, and, and to take your, your little no. boy. And yeah, y'all going in the, nah. in the Bentley coop, nigga. Nah, nah, not right now. I mean, because, yeah. but but, yeah. but I think that with everything, because to me, music is just an instrument for you to sell yourself as a brand. So with my music, right, people listen to my music, but then they be like, or oh, they see my video, they be like, oh, damn, what's that shirt? What's Merzo? Then I sell some T-shirts, but that's really directly from my music. Like you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I didn't make no money off of the streams or the album or whatever. But somebody saw me perform. They said, "Dang, I like your shirt. Here, how can I support you?" Boom! I made twenty dollars. Now that's that's it right there. See, that's that's what we need to be trying to figure out because they don't took the 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 I want to sell your CD hand to hand. So, yeah. So we got to find a way to replace that and come yeah. back and redevelop so we can we gain control over what we're doing. No. And, yeah. And we can't be out here p- playing like everything's okay when 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 all hell is breaking loose and our people are not really making the money except for show money or something like that. We got to figure a way to articulate this back to where we can control it and help our people. If we gonna do it. No, well, what I would say is that the um, I got you. for for the artists that you that you want to do is that man, you got to figure out how to monetize your YouTube channel. I, that's what they say, but I mean, it, it still goes deeper than that for me. For as people in the streets, we dealing with people, and and, and I seen you know all the clothes start being sold online, and I get it. But hand to hand, people coming, it's it's just it's the same to me. So at the end of the day, all I'm saying is we got to find a way to control it better and and, yeah. and monetize our things. To Tangible. No, the tangible, because the tangible sale yeah. is how people become millionaires. Exactly. If you have something to actually sell. Yeah. Like, well, just, you're creative. So that, I'm just saying, yeah. that's why we got to get our people, the, the 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 youth, the people who looking at you trying to get into music. We got to get them to where they understand how to deal with, you know, with, with, with everything. Okay. All right, so we almost, I ain't talked to y'all ear off today. No, no, that's all good. He got, I he went in outer down. space. I went in the outer oh, you, space. You a hell of a dude. I, I went back uh, to the middle of Earth. Shout out to Watts, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, Watts did this to me, man. Is the Earth flat around? Say, man, I'm not for to do this with you, bro. <laughs> Say, man, hey, man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, man. And we out.